I pretty much live with the Army. I've been to Afghanistan six times, Iraq once. My last deployment in Afghanistan, Ruzgan province, I dropped over 200,000 pounds of ordnance. They usually delegate me to do anything with, with air. Like I was also doing resupply, I'll call in the uh, helicopters to, to land with resupplies. I was calling in airdrops, but mainly I was the lifeline for their fire support. This is your type one controller. It's awesome to be the person that can call in that power. When you can actually call it like a 2,000 pound bomb, there's nothing can beat that. A guy's gonna shoot a bullet at you and you can bring back a 2,000 pound bomb. It's an amazing feeling. Air power is critical in breaking the will of the enemy and uh, forcing them into a position where they're either uh, neutralized or forced to surrender. Good pilot, brave one more. You go to the schoolhouse after you've done basic training. There you're going to spend several months learning the basic radios and procedures. And that's really the beginning of your training. From there, you go to survival school. And then you go back to your unit, and in your unit you continue your training. And it's really a long process because this is such a uh, varied field that there's several different things you need to get uh, proficient with before you can work your way to being a JTAC and being a primary forward air controller. Good tech P, it's gotta be smart, it's gotta be flexible. Nobody's holding your hand and you need to find what you what you're looking for on your own. He's gotta have a goal in mind and he gets out there and goes for it. Clear that. On the way. When an army commander comes to you, needs you know, close air support and you're able to offer it to him successfully, it's a good day's work. Standing by with laser. Come on, come on.